Hi guys, this is David Williams again, and I'm just going to give you a quick update on what's changed in our Cubiquity Voxel engine. So, if we go up to Game Object, Create Other, Terrain Volume, the first thing we'll notice is that it's now much faster to create the initial terrain. Um, it's pre-textured with grass and with soil underneath, and you can see these textures are automatically configured in the uh, inspector. So it's immediately ready for editing, so we can just straight away start painting on some hills or whatever structures we, we want. Um, I'm going to begin by creating a large rocky structure in the middle of our terrain. And then I'll demonstrate that uh, collision detection is now also working. So I just build this large structure like so. Doesn't look like rocks at the moment, but we can take the uh, paint tool, choose the rock texture, just paint it on like that, nice and easy. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll make a small cave in the in the side of the of the hill. Maybe about here. Supports caves and overhangs, of course, being voxel terrain. Um, and now to demonstrate that collision detection is working, I will add a first-person character controller, the standard Unity one. So that's, uh, well, we import the character controller package. Uh, standard assets, character controllers, and we can just drag a first person controller onto the scene, like so. We'll raise them up a bit so that uh, the time the terrain has time to de generate before he uh, reaches the ground as he falls. There's better ways to do it, of course, but this is for demonstration. Press play. Yep, and here we go. We can now walk around that scene which we just created. Not exactly sure where my cave was. It's here. Here we go. It's the cave. Terrain is 128 voxel squared. Okay, next up I will demonstrate um, procedural generation of terrain. So let's delete that terrain volume. And we will create an empty game object. And we will attach to that empty game object one of the scripts from the examples folder called procedural terrain volume. And if we select it, it generates a terrain procedurally. Now, this is just an example. Um, procedural generation is not really part of Cubiquity, but the example is just provided to show how you can implement it yourself using our API. Uh, I'm going to raise our character up a bit further to give him more time to fall. And if we hit play, I have to say it's running a bit slower than usual because of the uh, video recording in the background. But you can see we can now walk around our procedurally generated terrain. More interestingly, we've added runtime editing of the um, terrain in play mode. So we have here a script, click to carve terrain volume. If we drag that onto our terrain, like so, then when we click in the scene, under the mouse cursor, it now cuts away wherever we click. Better still, if we go down to uh, the grass here and we cut away that, you can see our terrain actually consists of multiple layers generated procedurally again, that we have the rock, above the rock we have soil, and above the soil we have a layer of grass. 
So have a look at this one as well, for example. There you go, you can see the soil more clearly here. Okay, so that's uh, procedural generation and uh, runtime editing all working nicely. The last thing which I want to show, um, if we delete that object now, in fact, let's delete the whole game object. Let's create a new one. And this time we're going to generate a colored cubic um, volume from an image. So, for example, in the resources folder of examples in images, we have this image of a maze, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner here. And we're going to use this as input to an example again, which uh, builds the volume from that bitmap. So we take our game object, which our empty one, which we created. We drag on um, this script called colored cube maze from image, fairly obvious. And again, if we select it, it generates that maze from the image we provided. And of course, you could instead uh, generate it procedurally um, rather than using an image if you prefer. Our first person controller will still work, but because we can't, uh, there's a scale problem basically. Um, the maze is much bigger compared to the character, and we can't scale volumes yet, so we're going to scale the character up instead. Let's make this about uh, 10 times bigger, I think. And so he has to move significantly faster as well. That should do it. And now if we hit play, we'll see him fall into the maze. Landed on the uh, wall, but never mind. There you go. We can now explore our maze from a first person point of view. And of course, runtime editing is still possible using the same script which we've shown previously, the click to destroy script. This one. We drag it onto the maze volume. And now, whenever we click on a wall, it can be destroyed. So if we can't find the way out of our maze, well, we can just make ourselves little shortcuts. And that'd be two, and then we can just, yeah, jump over. And of course you can destroy the floor as we've seen previously. Yeah. And uh, I think that's uh, more or less what I want to show for now. So um, thank you very much. There'll be uh, a new snapshot should be available with this video. So again, you can download it and you can try all this stuff yourself. Um, and we're going to carry on polishing it and working towards the final release. So uh, till then, bye.